Kingdom blessings and greetings. I'm King David, the vessel of Yielding Music Group, inviting you to stay tuned for season six of Let's Talk to the Lord, a gospel radio talk show created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. Keep it locked right there. Trying to do what's right, but it the best of me Once I make a decision Even when I don't know All of these situations Reveal the heart and the soul You know I read in the Bible About the last and evil days And I'm here but chaos I believe just what it says What did you gonna say? What you gonna do for the
holy and blessed greetings in uh, the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. I am your gospel radio apostle, Apostle John E. Roth, creator and host of this podcast, leading founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries, and thank you for tuning in for Season 6 of the Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. And Kingdom, our guest for this episode in Season 6 of Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show is former political prisoner of January 6th, Troy Smox. Kingdom Troy Smox, age 59, is a U.S. veteran and a Dallas, Texas resident. He is a patriot and a author. He has appeared on the Diamond and Silk Chit Chat Hour, Cowboy Logic, and continues the effort alongside new friend Mickey Babbitt, the mother of murdered U.S. Air Force veteran Ashley Babbitt, to fulfill his promise of ensuring justice for all January 6th defenders and to heal the nation's racial divide. Brother Troy Smocks, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Amen, and uh, thank you for having me. Amen. And, Brother, before we begin our interview, please share with the kingdom your repentance experience when you began your journey with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, Well, Minister, my repentance with the Lord has been with me for decades. But um, as I became more aware in my walk of faith, it seemed as though uh, God became more aware of my walk of faith as well. And um, as a result of this, when he began to use the skills that he allowed me to learn and hone even before I knew that he would call me, um, I I realized that, you know, God has never gone to castles and um, palaces to get his servants. He's always gone to the dust and ash. And I was just one of those many that he's called for whatever purpose he has for me. Amen. And what is your status now in the kingdom of God and in the body of Christ? Well, when I was just a young man um, in my late 20s, I suppose, uh, I dated a very spiritual young woman who would read the Bible to me. Um, just about every evening. And I quickly learned that my favorite personality in the Bible was David. Um, My friend said to me once that David was a man who was after God's own heart. And I then replied to her, no, I'm really the man after God's own heart. And then my friend said to me, she cautioned me actually, and said that, you know, I should be real careful about the things that I profess because God might just accept my invitation to compete, and he did. Amen, 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 and amen again. Kingdom, on January 6, 2021, a mob of 2,000 to 2,500, some supporters of United States President Donald Trump and some were not his supporters attacked the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. The Capitol complexes was locked down and lawmakers and staff were evacuated as rioters assaulted law enforcement officers vandalized property and occupied the building for several hours. Five people died either shortly before, during, or following the event. One was shot by Capitol Police, another died of a drug overdose, and three died of natural causes. Many people were injured, including 138 police officers. Four officers who responded to the attack died by suicide within seven months of the incident. 
Kingdom, I must say that let's talk to the Lord gospel radio talk show judges no one. We go to the word of God with every situation taking place in today's society, and we ask the Lord to give us the interpretation and revelation concerning what the word of God is saying. We seek the truth and instruction, and we govern ourselves accordingly. And we strive to educate the kingdom and listening audience. Kingdom Romans 13 declares in verse 1, Let every person by loyal subject to the be loyal subject to the governing civil authorities, for there is no authority except from God by his permission, his sanction, and those that exist do so by God's appointment which also lets us know when corruption is current and existing that there is a process God has set in place to correct it and change it. Verse 2, therefore, he who resists and sets up himself against the authorities resists what God has appointed and arranged in divine order, and those who resist will be bring down judgment upon themselves, receiving the penalty due them. Verse 3, for civil authorities are not a terror to people of good conduct, but to those of bad behavior. Would you have no dread of him who is in authority? Simply saying God placed in our DNA the knowledge of how to set up justice and our governing system. There is also, this is letting us know that those who are elected are commanded by God to follow the law and constitution in all matters in everything they do. Then do what is right, and you will receive his approval and commendation. Brother Smox, I am by no means judging you. I consulted with the Lord on how to proceed with our interview. I am following the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and I am going to allow you to tell your story and give your testimony. Kingdom, my perspective on what happened on January 6th is that I believe we had a combination of things taking place simultaneously. First, the difference between an insurrection and a rebellion is that a rebellion is an unaccountable armed resistance to an established government or ruler while insurrection is an organized opposition to an authority. In other words, a rebel protest against a dictatorship. Here in the United States, we are allowed to have peaceful protests and gatherings. I am going to keep my opinion of the current administration to another separate podcast, although I will say when it comes to the current governing body to say that their first 12 months has been one catastrophe after another is a understatement. And the mainstream media that is referred to as the fake news are reporting, and they are reporting what serves a particular party's interest, and they air and report what they want the viewers to see, and they simply don't report the other side or perspective. They have become real good editors at editing what they want you to see and tell you what they want you to know. When it comes to January 6th, I know for a fact the mainstream media shows the side of the Capitol that fits their narrative and leaves the other side that happened that day unreported. Thank God for Newsmax and One America News Network that does a pretty good job with reporting all sides of the story. 
According to Yahoo News, reported October 22, 2021, a Texas man received the longest sentencing related to January 6 riots so far, despite not being at the Capitol. A Texas man was sentenced to 14 months in prison for threats he made on Polaro social media site on January 6. Troy Smox received the longest prison sentence related to the Capitol riot so far, despite not being at the riot. Brother Troy Smox, please share with the kingdom, please share with us why you were arrested and detained in regards to January 6th and why you did not go to the Capitol. Thank you, Minister, for allowing me to do this. <clears throat> The reason that I did not go to the Capitol is probably the, the most profound question that anyone has ever asked. And the reason that many of the media is not covering this because it's race-based. Just like uh, during the Civil Rights era, we had a lot of black people that were marching in the streets, and, but we weren't alone. We had a lot of good-hearted white people there as well. And what was happening is that the police beat us, they water hosed us, they stick the dogs on us, and those kind of anti-caps not changed. Now, take into account that the majority, the, an overwhelming majority of the men and women who were arrested for January 6th were military veterans, the same ones that raised their hands to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution, not to defend and protect a man, but to defend the Constitution. And when I was in Washington on the 6th, from the time that we got there, it was a very hostile environment. All the shops were closed. The restaurants were closed. You couldn't even find a bathroom. And there were officers, black officers, that were assembled together that I heard. I wasn't in any Trump gear, and because I was a black man, they figured that, okay, he must be good to go. So they spoke freely around me. And their language was that they could not wait to be called so that they could, well, explicit. I'm not going to go into their direct language because I respect the forum here. But everyone listening knows what I'm talking about. They were going to do some really messed up stuff to Trump supporters. And I was arrested, even though I didn't go there, for political speech. I was the first person in America that the government targeted to make political speech illegal. Even though the Constitution says that political speech is well protected, I actually had to plead guilty to conduct that the Supreme Court says is not criminal just to get home to Texas because in Washington, D.C., the Constitution of the United States is no more. The, the Well, Washington, D.C. has gone rogue. The judges don't respect the Supreme Court, and they don't respect the Constitution. Um, I was actually compelled to tell the truth about what happened because I guess as a black man, I can give it a different perspective, and that's that the so-called rioters did not start the conflict. Black police officers started the conflict. They planned it, and they started it. They targeted, from my perspective, what I saw. They targeted um, the elderly women and children in order to incite the men to fight them. And it's one of those situations where the government, again, throws a rock and then hides its hand, and the mainstream media falls right into line and report the lie, and everyone believes the lie. And, you know, I've always learned that with enough money, there's three places where you can take a lie and turn it into a tr the truth, and the truth and turn it into a lie. And that's Washington, the, the ballot box, and the television. And this is what's happening. The protesters didn't start that. The police started that fight. And that's just what it was. It was a fight. The police wanted to beat up the people that had come to the District of Columbia to support the most hated man in the district. 
and that's just the truth. That's what God has put on my heart to tell, and that's what I'm telling everyone that will listen. Brother Smox, please share with the kingdom your experience of being detained and held in jail. Okay, like um, like Daniel before me, I was placed into the lion's den, but God assured me that I would be unharmed. The federal government placed me, the only black man, in a confined jail space with three dozen government-declared white supremacists. But I came out unharmed because God wanted me to tell you the truth in order that we black people in America would not be used to fuel a race war. Amen. So, Brother Smox, what has life been like for you since your release? Well, um, since my release, life has not been easy. Um, The federal government has labeled me and everyone else a domestic terrorist, and they have illegally used the Patriot Act against me and the others to completely cancel us from society. You've heard of the cancel culture where, well, they use the cancel culture on us. Everything is gone, my home, my career, banking, savings, credit, or credit cards and credit ratings. When I, um, when I was arrested, or I will say abducted by the FBI over a year ago, my credit rating was nearly 800. Today it's 425 and everything's been wiped off. There's no record of anything. Professional licenses, insurance policies, all gone. There's, um, there's, nothing, there's nothing left. And so I will say the only thing that they have not done to me personally is to physically exile me from the country. And a lot of people hear the words Patriot Act, but they really don't grasp what the government is doing. Um, On January, excuse me, on March 13th, the uh, Department of Homeland Security under the Biden administration, they put out a a moratorium stating that if you believe that the 2020 election was stolen or you doubt Fauci in any way, they're going to target you and they're going to use the Patriot Act. Now, they said this. That's their words, not mine. They're going to target over 72 million Americans using the same optic or the same tactic because it works for them. Amen. So now that it's over, amen, and and have have um, – what have you learned, and what is your advice to the future generation about how to handle their disagreements with the government or the governing body? Well, I, I will say this, that you can't bargain and you can't reason with Satan, and that's what we are now. I, I would also say that, you know, Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and protect with all your heart and all your might what belongs to God. And people of all races belong to God. Now, what's going on here in the United States right now is a spiritual battle of good versus evil at its core. Uh, When I arrived in Washington, D.C., I sensed an aura of, of evil. That's when I arrived on January 6th. I sensed an aura of evil all around me. The whole has a noticeable um, demonic presence to it. And and this is truly the devil's playground. But to emphasize things, there's an undercurrent that is being waged or being enacted by the Washington elite to start a race conflict here in America, and they are using optics to make it appear that black Americans are taking the lead on the destruction of civil rights in the United States. And this is because for the last 58 years, Americans of all races have seemed to embrace the teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King. You know, we practice equality for everybody. But what Joe Biden and his regime has done when they come into office, the first thing that he did is he attacked the sovereignty of our nation's churches. He he shut down the churches under COVID but allow the liquor stores to remain open because spirituality has always been the bedrock of our country. And once you attack God at its core, then 
we have nothing to rely on. He's taking God out of churches. He's taking God out of schools and out of the federal buildings. We used to have in God we trust, but now that's all gone and it's replaced with homosexuality, um, child molestation, and just gay rights and abortion, killing babies. And no matter where you are on the political spectrum with that, you have to always fall back to what God's principles are and not necessarily what man's principles are. The second thing that Biden did, he created a massive race-based hatred campaign, and he took 3,000 white men and places them into the, the most predominantly black area in Washington, D.C., and in the nation. And then he publicly calls them white supremacists, knowing all the time that this was a lie. These men are just regular guys. They're not white supremacists. They're veterans. And then he orders that they be denied every right that American citizens have always held sacred. So just imagine in our community if the government rounded up three dozen black men and taken them into rural Alabama and treated them the exact same way. You would have Al Sharpton, the NAACP, the ACLU, and every other alphabet civil rights organization down in Alabama fighting for the rights of these people. But what the Biden regime has done, they've taken these white men, put them in Washington, D.C., and treated them very, very bad. And if black people don't get ahead of this, it's not going to end well for us as a people because you're going to have rural sheriffs who are white and you're going to have rural judges who are white and jailers who are white. And they're going to do the same thing that's been done to the 36 men in Washington, D.C. They're going to do that to us. And for 58 years, we've had Dr. King's teachings to stand on, equality, civil rights, so on and so forth. But what Biden has done in, 50, in, in less than one year is destroyed 58 years of civil rights teaching. And so you're going to have a lot of white people in rural and urban areas that are going to treat young black men and women the same way, and then we no longer have that, that hierarchy that Dr. King established because when we start talking about, well, civility and equal rights, then they're going to throw back at us, well, when you had those three dozen white men up in Washington, D.C., you guys treated them bad. You had one shot in history to show us what Dr. King was preaching, and then when, it was, when you were given the time to do this, you failed. And so if we as a people, as a black people, don't get in front of this, then it's not going to end well for us. We all get in our, church, in our cars and our vehicles, and we go to church every Sunday, to the word and to worship, and God tells us in the scriptures to remember the prisoners as though you were bound to them. And even Dr. King says back in 1958 from, um, from jail, he writes, we must not seek to use our emerging freedom and our growing power to do the same thing to the white minority that have been done to us for so many centuries. Our aim must never be to defeat or humiliate the white man. We must not become victimized with a philosophy of black supremacy. God is not interested merely in freeing black men or brown men and yellow men, but God is interested in freeing the whole human race. And so we, must, we have to remember this, and we can't let this evil dictate what's going to happen to us as a people in the future. We have to get ahead of this thing and tell them, yeah, if you believe that these white men broke the law, okay, send them through the process, but don't mistreat them. Not when it portrays that we're the ones that's doing it. Amen, amen, and amen again. Brother Smox, I know there were many voting irregularities. I don't know if it was enough to reelect President Trump or not, but with all you suffer, do you feel it was worth the time and trouble? Well, I will say this. When God sends his soldiers on a mission, there is never regret. 
just an honor to have been called upon to serve. When God gave Jesus the mission to die for us, it was a mission that, you know, his earthly body did not want to do. You know, Jesus said, God, can you remove this, this cup from my, my mouth? I don't really don't want to do this because it's going to hurt. But he, you know, he said to the Father, let thy will be done. And so if it's, if it's good enough for Jesus, then who am I to complain? It's good enough for me, you know. And God never said that, you know, if I choose you, you're going you're gonna to have to like it. He just said, be obedient. And that's where I stand on it. So how has your faith in Christ increased since this situation has taken place in your life? Well, I no longer operate on faith. I, I have personally witnessed the works of God, and therefore I now operate on fact. God is real, period. Amen. So, Troy Smox, introduce yourself to the kingdom. Well, um, I believe it in, in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I believe in God, the Father, and I believe in honor. I believe in our country. You know, um, a lot of people from other places, they come to the United States, and they enjoy all that we as Citizens here, as taxpayers here, have to offer. But we must remember something. At any given time where these people get fed up with the United States, they have another place where they can go back to they, that they call home. But this is the only place that we have. So we have to take care of this place with everything that we have, with all of our might. Each one of us are soldiers, and though not all soldiers wear uniforms, we are called to protect each other and our home because this is all we got. Now, um, for people that want to follow me, I'm on Getter at T.A. Smock. Um, I also have, I started the Real Patriot News 1779 network because there was no news outlets out there that was really covering January 6th. It's supposed to be the biggest criminal case in United States history but the legacy news medias are not covering it. Even the so-called conservative news medias are not covering it the way that they should. So, you know, if you want something done right and no one else is doing it, God says do it yourself. And that's what I did. If you want to support me or you want to listen to it, we air every Wednesday at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. We air on Twitch TV, so you will have to download the app and then go to Real Patriot News 1779. And there is a, a gifts and go to help sponsor this and support this because I have no money. I am completely broke. I am destitute. So if you want to support me through the, um, the creation of the news network, you can go to gives and go uh, backslash Real Patriot News 1779. Uh, let's see, am I, am I leaving anything out? <laughs> oh, I also have a book that was written in 1995, excuse me, 2000, 2015 it was released. It's called Intimately Speaking with Women, and I wrote it under a pseudonym for as a gift to my nieces because being young ladies and dating, I wanted to show them or at least express to them the downfalls to look for when dating. It's not a dating book, just a book about men, who we are, why we act the way we act, and how it affects the women in our lives, because women are God's greatest creation. If he made anything better, he kept it for himself. <laughs> Man. And how may the kingdom support you and purchase your books? Uh, you can go to Amazon. Uh, just enter Intimately Speaking for Women. It's by Tony Detroit Perez. My dad is a Perez. My mom is a Smuck. And um, I write under my dad's pseudonym in, in homage to him. But you can directly support me, and I would very much appreciate it, um, by making your don donations to 
gives and go at Real Patriot News 1779, and that would help support me as a person and my family because right now we don't even have a place to, to lay our head and call home. At one time, I had a career, I had um, a business. Today, we have nothing, and I have to actually fight the government to get rid of the Patriot Act just to get my life back, to get my banking account unfrozen, you know, just to live again. And is there anything else related to you and your involvement or what happened to you in regards to January 6th that you would like the kingdom to know? Uh, absolutely there is. And um, I shared this with you off the air, but the federal government, because I was the only black man jailed and I could dispute Biden's big white supremacy um, mess that he putting out there. He has a narrative to start this race war. Just like Donald Trump and Carter Page before me, they totally demonized me in the press and just flat out lied. Um, if you were to Google my name, you would find, you would think that I was the typical black man that most Democrats believe we are, and that's, you know, um, a worthless criminal with a, you know, a worthless individual with a, with a long criminal history, and that's simply not true. Nowhere would they tell you that, you know, I'm a distinguished veteran because that would conflict with the lie that they put in the, in the, uh, the press. And once it's in the Internet or once it's released by the media, that becomes their truth, and so many people read it. So if you were to think about interviewing me or if I were to say something, I would have no credibility. But as I expressed to you and showed to you, you know, that once this was all over, the FBI came to my, my place where I'm staying. They returned all my property, and along with the property that they returned was all my my military discharge papers, my dog tags, my blue ID card. If anyone's a veteran, then they know exactly what I'm talking about. Everything that they did was an orchestrated lie in order to further their agenda. And the reason that they're doing this is because they need the black vote. They have bamboozled us for so long that they believe that they're entitled to it. And the leaders in our community, in our black community, that they believed um, should, that we believe should be standing up for us, like the church members. Money has turned them into the Judas. They're on the other side. So they, uh, they attacked me to destroy my credibility so that I could not tell you the truth. But in the end, this is God's fight. God is going to prevail. And as we all know, no matter who you are or what position you have, your arms are too short to box with God. He's always going to win that fight. Amen, amen, and amen again. Kingdom Let's Talk to the Lord can be heard on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Alexa, and YouTube. You may download episodes from speaker.com under Let's Talk to the Lord. We are live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time from KingdomInfluencersBroadcast.com and every Saturday morning we are on SensationalSoundsRadio.net. Please write to us at Let's Talk to the Lord at Yahoo.com. Please follow us on Twitter at Ross Apostle. Please visit our website, Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International. Please download our app on your Play Store for your cell phones under Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. You can now ask Alexa to play Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International and Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel radio talk show kingdom we are now on roku to find us on roku go to your my tuner platform and search let's talk to the lord gospel radio station or if you would like to listen to the podcast on roku go to your i heart radio platform and search let's talk to the lord gospel radio talk show
Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International is your 24-hour station for talk news, radio interviews, and Christian music. On Amazon, order our book, Spiritual Guidance Through Alzheimer's Disease with author Kimberly V. Porter. All of my music are available on Amazon and all digital stores. Lord, give me another chance featuring Sean E. Skills and Tamara Lloyd is now available. And remember, now thy creator featuring King David the Vessel and a new duo and doctrine is also available under the name Minister John E. Ross. Kingdom on. Till next time, may God bless you, and may God keep you every day living your lives at the foot of the cross under a open heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Walk a mile as we share our views. Divided we fall, united we stand in peace. I see despair as we live in fear. 